Yo, what's poppin' my people? It's your boy Crooks, your great back at you guys with another banger of a UFC 4 video. And in today's video, we're gonna be using the newly buffed Alex Pijera here in the middleweight division. Now, before we even get cracking on this video, happy Thanksgiving to all of you guys and your families. I'm very, very thankful for every subscriber that I have on this channel. Shout out to everybody that's always pulling up to the videos, liking the videos, pulling up to the streams, um, always chatting in the streams as well. I really, really appreciate you guys because without you guys, I wouldn't be here. So I highly, I really, really appreciate you guys always tuning in to the videos and showing your boy some love. So just wanted to get that out of the way. So you guys see here, it's we're actually using Alex v. Alex. And this guy has beaten me one time. So, you know, you, you know when it's 2-1 and one and these records are kind of low, it can make for a really interesting fight. So you see, we're just trying to take our time here with Alex just because we're fighting against another Alex. And uh, Alex actually got one of the biggest buffs I think I've ever seen uh, in UFC history, really. He went up uh, plus three in power, plus one in accuracy, plus one in block, or minus one in blocking, I'm sorry, plus one in footwork, plus three in takedown defense, plus one kick power, plus two in, two in takedowns, plus, two, plus three in submissions, plus five in ground striking, uh, plus one clinch control, plus one body health plus one leg health, and plus two recovery. So, damn! The motherfucker, can he have gotten buffed any better as we actually get a rock off right there? He literally had almost every one of his stats buffed. So, you know, he, he might easily be considered the new meta fighter. I'm not going to cap. Which is nice for me because I can switch back to using Robert Whitaker because Robert Whitaker is my, uh, is my favorite fighter in real life, but it is what it is. But here we did get that rock, so we're just trying to take our time and catch him right there with a nice pull counter straight. And you see already throughout this entire fight, we've been chopping at that lead leg of Alex. And that is the one weakness if you are going to be fighting and not using Alex yourself that you can, you can exploit is he has a very, very low switch stance. He never switches out of the orthodox stance in real life or hardly ever does it. Um, so he has an 80 switch stance. So that's that. If you can start to chop at that lead leg and lower that power down from 99, which is where it's at right now, to about a 97, you can kind of tend to do some things. So that's what we're trying to do. This guy's trying to work the body. And our stamina consumption is looking pretty good. So far, we're starting to press forward just a little bit, but we're not over committing. Just because if we get hit with the, with the pull counter or a slip counter, we're we're, we're going to be in some trouble. Not going to lie. So there we go with the nice pushing sidekick. Nice calf kick right there by my opponent. Just taking our time. Catch him right there with a clean two-piece. Hurt him. Now we're o not over committing on combinations too heavy. He tries to go with the front kick, but we're out of there. And now we're circling back and resetting. Taking our time. Trying to be as technical as possible. We don't really want to be getting in a brawl with another Alex, to be honest. And that's going to be the end of the first round. Now, we did get hurt in that first round as well. Uh, but we also did come back and hurt him as, as well. So it's kind of just a back and forth first round. I'd have to say I got it just because I landed some very, very good calf kicks on him in that first round. But we're going to try to be a little more dominant here in the second round. So we touch gloves and we're back underway. We immediately start off with the calf kick straight. Catches us there with a clean two-piece. Then goes down to the body. Very clean work. I like it. So we return the favor. You see, we're just trying to take our time, catch him with a good jab straight as we set. He faints off the front kick right there. Just taking our time. Nice knee as he went down to the body with a clean body hook. Nice combination right there by him, but we make him pay with a nice calf kick. Go down to the body with the jab lead body hit. Just taking our time. Not really trying to rush anything. You see how even though I'm being pressured, I'm just mixing up my combinations. And I feel like for those of you guys that have stated that you guys have a hard time dealing with pressure fighters, this is the strategy you have to have. You have to keep your back off the cage and you have to really have some kind of output coming back to really make your opponent second guess pressuring you. So here you see, even though he's landing, I'm still landing as well. I'm chipping away at that block health, taking my time. Kind of just pushing forward when I can. And we're absorbing a little bit of damage. But the 97 chin health of Alex Pijera is going to 
it's gonna be there. It's gonna actually help us in this fight. So we're still chopping at that leg. And that's lowering that power down. Right there, catching with a hook, hurt him. And that's what we were looking for, going down to the body three times just to lower that stamina down just a little bit more. Then immediately back on the leg kick, hurting him with the one-two. Nice three-punch combination right there by him. But you see, we get a nice leg kick rock. The first one of the fight. And now we, he's right where we want him to be at. And we knock him down with a cleanly uh, timed three-punch combination right there. And now he's going to switch into southpaw. So now we can feel a little bit more comfortable with exchanging with him in the pocket. If we need to. So here we're still just taking our time. Just because we did get that leg kick rock does not mean we can just go crazy on him. We still have to be very technical because one counter from him and we'll be put out of the game. But we heard him right there with a clean combination. Just taking our time. Not really rushing anything. Everything that we're throwing is hitting on that block. So we're not losing as much stamina as we would be if he was just moving off, slipping, trying to make us whiff. So that's in our favor as well. Hit him to the body, then back up to the head. Staying patient. Now that rear that rear body kick is gonna be to the open side too. So that's gonna that's there for us to be able to drain his stamina as well. And he knows it as well. That's why he goes with that nice body kick right there. Still just staying patient. Throwing a front kick out there just to let him know you can't just be advancing whenever you feel like it, bro. So popping that jab off, he did a nice job of slipping that. Slips another one, goes down to the body as the second round ends right there. We did a lot of damage, not only to his head, but also to the legs. And that is the most important thing to do when you're fighting an Alex, is you have to try to get him in uncomfortable spots. And if you can get him to switch that stance, you're in a very, very good spot. So there, he hit us with a nice body hook off the nice question mark kick that we did throw. Still just trying to space it out. Still chopping at that leg. If we can get another leg kick rock uh, on this opposite leg, on the right leg, we're going to be in a hell of a good spot. I'm not going to cap. So we're just still taking our time. Not rushing anything. Nice body kick right there by us. We threaten with that uppercut off the block counter. Right there, catch him with a jab, but the hook just barely missed it. And we're going to be looking for a finish in this fight as well, guys. We're not just going to be going for a, a decision win. We're looking for a finish, but we're not going to rush it. Catch him with a nicely timed straight. Oh, he almost hit us with that ducking uppercut. Need to be careful. He's starting to try to make reads as well. Nice slip straight hurts us. Tries to go down with the double body hooks, but misses. We catch that body kick. I'm going to push him up, push him down right there with a nice trip. Go with the double hooks. And now we have him up against the cage. Time out, a beautifully timed combination. Go to the body twice off the rock that we do have. Trying to go with that flying knee. Trying to get a little bit of a spectacular finish. I'm not going to cap. I'm not going to cap. Sorry, y'all just heard my, uh, my notifications go off. But it is what it is. Just taking the time. He's still engaged in this fight right here. He's fainting off body punches now, trying to bait out a slip up or a slip uppercut or a slip hook. So we just need to be aware of that. Misses on the front kick. We hit him with a calf kick in exchange for our troubles right there. Try to go with the head kick, but we miss. Hit him with a good uppercut that kind of just stopped him in his tracks. And now look, he's starting to whiff on a lot of his combinations. And I know that chin health is pretty low too. Because we've done a lot of damage. So it's going to make him second guess going. But our stamina is looking not the best. So we traded in damage. Stamina for damage. Which hopefully it works out for us. Because it doesn't always do that. I'm not going to lie. So here he's still popping out that jab. But you can see he doesn't feel comfortable in Southpaw. And a lot of people don't. A lot of people will only use a fighter... Uh, will only use fighters that stand in a certain stance. So, like, a lot of... I've noticed a lot of guys will only use Dustin Poirier um, in Southpaw. And they struggle when you kick that leg and make them switch to Orthodox. They really, really struggle. So, it looks like this guy feels very, very uncomfortable with having to fight out of Southpaw. Because you notice there's not a lot of combination strings coming out. Everything's one strike and gone. There's not a lot of, like, a lot of... Advanced combinations as we get a good stun right there. 
We're hurting him trying to get that finish. And he goes with the roundhouse kick to the head. And that's the end of the third round. But like I said, those, those combinations that he was launching at us earlier in the earlier rounds, they're not there. So that's as he slows down, we're going to be able to land more damaging shots. So he touched gloves for the beginning of this fourth round and we're underway. Catch him right there with a cleanly timed roundhouse. Now we're going for the finish right here with Alex. Going with a nice ground and pound damage. And we're able to get the job done off the clean roundhouse kick on the read that we did make. Got the dub. But that's it for the video, guys. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to slap that subscribe button as well as slap that like button. I do post UFC 4 content on this channel daily. And like I said, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. I hope you guys, you guys are able to spend time with your families. You guys are able to have a good day today. As I know, I'm going to be enjoying it with my family as well. But until the next video, guys, take it easy, be safe, and thank you guys for stopping by again.